Imran Khan, a prominent figure in Pakistani politics, finds himself at the center of a legal battle that reaches beyond his own case. Accused in multiple cases, Khan has petitioned the court for the right to attend hearings virtually. This request, based on security concerns, has ignited a debate about the use of technology within Pakistan's judicial system. The case, Imran Ahmad Khan Niazi vs. Federation of Pakistan, raises critical questions about balancing security, tradition and access to justice in a rapidly changing world. A Pakistan's legal landscape is navigating the incorporation of modern technology and virtual court appearances represent a significant shift. While not explicitly prohibited, the practice lacks a concrete legal framework. This ambiguity leaves room for interpretation with both sides in Khan's case, citing existing laws to support their arguments. The petitioner Imran Khan points to successful instances of virtual hearings during the COVID-19 pandemic as a precedent. He argues that continuing this practice would not contradict established legal norms. On the other hand, the state emphasizes the importance of physical presence for certain judicial procedures, particularly during the indictment phase. Imran Khan's petition for virtual court appearances hinges on two primary arguments, security concerns and legal precedent. Khan, citing threats to his safety, believes that appearing in person would pose an unacceptable risk. His legal team highlights the volatile political climate and points to past incidents where high-profile figures faced security breaches within court premises. Furthermore, Khan's petition references the increasing acceptance of virtual hearings in Pakistan. The COVID-19 pandemic, which forced Dazatan Kutakistas force courts to adapt, Pochatis Poch demonstrated the feasibility of remote proceedings. Khan argues that this shift born out of necessity has paved the way for a more technology-driven approach to justice. Section 4. The state's opposition. The importance of physical presence. The state, while acknowledging the potential benefits of technology, expresses reservations about granting Imran Khan's request. Their opposition centers on the belief that physical presence remains crucial for certain judicial processes. Specifically, they argue that the gravity of the charges against Khan necessitates his physical presence during the indictment phase. The state contends that physically appearing before the court holds symbolic and procedural significance. They argue that it ensures the solemnity of the proceedings and allows the court to assess the demeanor of the accused, a factor they deem essential for a fair trial. Section 5. The Court's Decision A Balancing Act Between Security and Procedure The court facing a complex issue with far-reaching implications issued a nuanced decision that attempts to balance security concerns with the established norms of the judicial system. Recognizing the legitimacy of Khan's security concerns, the court granted him conditional approval for virtual appearances. This means that while Khan may attend some hearings remotely, his physical presence will be required for crucial stages, including the indictment. This decision reflects the court's attempt to modernize the judicial process without compromising its integrity. By allowing virtual appearances for certain hearings, the court acknowledges the potential of technology to enhance efficiency and accessibility. However, by requiring physical presence for key stages, the court affirms the importance of traditional legal procedures. Certain Section 6 Implications for Judicial Reform Embracing Technology Ensuring Access The case of Imran Khan and the debates surrounding virtual court appearances have brought to light the need for comprehensive judicial reform in Pakistan. The current legal framework, largely developed before Afna, uh, before the advent of modern technology, 
struggles to accommodate the possibilities and challenges of the digital age. This case serves as a catalyst for a much needed conversation about how to modernize Pakistan's judicial, judicial system without compromising its core values. One of the key areas for reform is the development of a clear and comprehensive legal framework for virtual court proceedings. This framework should address concerns about due process, security and accessibility while ensuring that the rights of all parties are protected. Additionally, it's crucial to invest in infrastructure and training to bridge the digital divide and ensure that all citizens have equal access to justice, regardless of their technological literacy or geographic location. Section 7. Virtual Courts and the Future of Justice in Pakistan The case of Imran Khan highlights a pivotal moment in the evolution of Pakistan's justice system. The integration of technology while presenting challenges holds immense potential to make the legal system more efficient, accessible and responsive to the needs of the people. Virtual courts, if implemented thoughtfully and equitably, can play a significant role in reducing court backlogs, minimizing delays and ensuring that justice is served swiftly and fairly. However, the transition to a more technology-driven legal system must be approached with caution. Safeguards must be put in place to prevent digital exclusion and ensure that the, the fundamental right to a fair trial is upheld for all. The path forward requires a delicate balancing act, embracing innovation while preserving the integrity and accessibility of the justice system.